and welcome to Viral History. Today we're at the Tutankhamun Treasures of the Golden Pharaoh exhibition at the Saatchi Gallery and we're thrilled to be joined by Dr Angela Stien, who's a human remains specialist. We can't wait to get stuck in. Yeah, loads and loads to see here and if you're like me and you believe aliens built the pyramids then maybe you should come down and have your crackpot theories disproved. I haven't seen a single spaceship yet. Make sure you come down and check it out, you might even learn something. Imagine packing for the longest holiday of your life. That's exactly what a pharaoh like Tutankhamun had to do to prepare for his journey to the afterlife after he died. In his tomb were 50 crates and chests full of clothes, food, protective amulets and glittering jewellery, everything that he was going to need for his journey through the afterlife. And included in that were these beautiful linen gloves which are over 3,000 years old. The unique thing is nobody's ever found another pharaoh's tomb in the Valley of the Kings, so it is still the only, you know, uh, fully discovered uh, tomb. So uh, Tutankhamun was not a famous king or pharaoh in his time, but now he's the most well, the well-known pharaoh of Egypt. Uh, because of this discovery. So that's what makes it amazing. Dr. Howes, welcome to London. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I thought maybe you could tell us a bit about what you think the value of this exhibition in London is. This exhibit is going to be very important to the English because the English and the Egyptians uh, share this discovery. Howard Carter found this tomb and this is why to bring King Tut back to Egypt to the London, it will capture the hearts of people everywhere. We have 60 objects travel for the first time to come to London and this will capture the hearts of people. I believe more than one million will see this exhibit in this coming six months. Brilliant. And can you tell us a bit about why uh, we should all come back to Egypt and the great Egypt, news? Egypt is safe, completely. I am telling this message to the whole world that Egypt is safe. I need people to come back to visit us because the visit of the people to come to Egypt, it will participate in the conservation and the restoration of the Egyptian monuments. Again, Egypt is safe, we need people to come back. Brilliant, and can you just tell us two words about the new museum that's about to The open? Grand Museum is the most important cultural museum in the world. It will be opened end of next year. Brilliant. Uh, and the artifact in this museum will be shown for the first time in a beautiful way and it will capture the hearts of people all over the world. Brilliant, we can't wait to see. Thank you. The ancient Egyptians believed that when you were dead, you were simply sleeping. So when you awoke, you were actually being reborn, hence the need for Tutankhamun's magnificent golden bed, which is just behind me here. It's made of wood, gilded in gold, and it has four perfectly carved lion's paws at the base of each foot of the bed, offering him protection. This is the first time that this object has left Egypt. Angela, tell us a little bit about this exhibition and what makes it so important. It's just brilliant to have this exhibition in London for the last stop. I think that the amazing thing about this exhibition is that we know so much about Tutankhamun's mummy and his mask, but sometimes we fail to appreciate how beautiful the other objects are and how important they were to the funerary complex. So I think this is just a really amazing opportunity to see those objects in an amazing setting. Absolutely. And you are an expert in human remains, but actually you specialise in human remains within museums. So what kind of challenges might the exhibition have faced when they were transporting these objects? I think the, the really important things about uh, human remains in museums is thinking that they're on public view, which is not what they were originally meant to be, so they were meant to be entombed. So it's just really interesting thinking about the public and how they're going to react to having human remains on display, and seeing Egyptian mummies always elicit different um, reactions. Uh, we don't have an Egyptian mummy here, but I think it's important to think that those objects were related to the Egyptian mummy, so even though it's not here, it's really part of an ensemble. Mm. And your, your background is in Egypt, Egyptology as well as human remains, so um, can you tell us a little bit about the way that you work with mummies and museums? Yeah, absolutely. So I did a BA, a bachelor's degree uh, in Egyptology here in London, and then I went on to do museum studies, and I got a PhD, and my research is really on human remains. I think that um, I was always interested in thinking how people react to human remains, because I grew up in Paris, and I would see Egyptian mummies at the Musée du Louvre. 
um, and I'm now working at the Science Museum with a very different collection and I'm just really interested generally in how we can engage better with the public on human remains and just make things more ethical but also more engaging and having better conversations. Are there um, certain mummy myths that you find challenging to sort of overcome with the public? I think Egyptian mummies, it's just so interesting because there's so much popular culture in Europe that really makes people have really sort of biased and quite strange ideas about Egyptian mummies. So <laughs> my work is really on making people realize that they're people and you know, talk a lot more about their story and the fact that they're really just similar to us and have a more human conversation, I think. So when you are working with mummies, what, what are you trying to learn about them? Um, what I'm really interested in is um, how much we can talk about Egyptian mummies in different ways. So for example, at the moment, I've had really good discussions with people that study ancient disease on Egyptian mummies, and they're really thinking that this can help um, understand disease in the future, which is really amazing. There's just such a bar era of expertise and so many conversations we can have so I'm really like interested in learning more but also how we can put these new explanations in the museum and talk about the long history of how Egyptian mummies came to museums there are some problematic history that I'm really interested in uncovering and just making more accessible to the public and I know that um, there are obviously some fascinating objects on display in this exhibition, but one of your favourites is this one just yes. behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about I it? I think um, it's really just stunning. I think <laughs> that sometimes we forget to just look at objects in museums. And because this exhibition is so beautifully designed, we really get to appreciate how amazing the craftsmanship in ancient Egypt was. And uh, we talk so much about you know Egyptian mummies, but actually some of the objects made of wood uh, so long ago that have survived is just really, really stunning. And for me, that's just like such an impressive representation of the craftsmanship, but also the really the belief of what should go in tombs, which is really impressive. Just the size of it is just amazing. Yeah. So I love this one. And um, in terms of why, why do you think that? exhibitions like this are important for Egyptian history or actually just ancient history history in general. I just think that having an exhibition here touring the world, this is the last stop, but, but I saw it in Paris before that, it's just an amazing way of accessing and really seeing those objects that most people have been learning about at school, for example, or in magazines, but there's nothing quite like seeing the object. I also think that it's such an amazing opportunity to realize how much Egypt has to offer, and what I really hope is that this is just a snapshot and that people will get really excited and go back to Egypt and see the amount of objects and just amazing even architecture that they have to offer. You're right, it is amazing to see them in the flesh and it's nothing like looking at them in, in books. And um, Thank you so much for well, talking thank to you us. For inviting me. Only the wealthiest and most important ancient Egyptians could afford to read or write. In the case behind me is, can you believe it, an ancient pen case for Tutankhamun to write letters in his time in the afterlife. We wanted to tell the story of why these objects were included in the tomb because they were supposed to be for his afterlife. So that's why there were boats and there were shabtis and there were chests and there was a pair of gloves. And these are all the things that Tutankhamun would use to, on his journey to the afterlife. So I think that's a very unique and fun way of looking at this exhibition. Part of being mummified involved your organs being removed and put into small jars ready for you to take with you to the afterlife. This tiny gold coffin is modelled on Tutankhamun himself and would have contained his liver ready for him to take on into the other world. So Angela, you're a human remains specialist. Tell me, how do you get even started in a job like that? So I was really lucky, I grew up in Paris and I used to go to um, the Louvre quite a lot and I was really interested in ancient Egypt as a kid and so I um, got my first internship there at 16 and then at 18 I got my first job as a gallery attendant and I was really surprised when I was walking in the Egyptian gallery to see people's responses to the Egyptian mummy because a lot of people were having strange reactions like laughing or knocking on the case and I always thought Egyptian mummies were people so I was really surprised and that got me really interested in doing Egyptology and then museum studies to study Egyptian mummies more. So could you tell us a little bit more about some of your own research? 
Yes, so my research is really into how people engage with Egyptian mummies. So I look a lot at the history, 18th, 19th century, how people collected Egyptian mummies, and really why we have so many in Europe. And there's obviously a lot of complicated history of colonialism involved with this. I'm also really interested in how Egyptian mummies were studied for medical studies. So dissections of Egyptian mummies were quite common. And what they were really interested in finding out when they were doing these investigations. And so from this, I got really interested in contemporary uh, interactions with Egyptian mummies and really why people have this fascination with Egyptian mummies in particular. And so my work now is really putting public engagement events and really having a conversation about Egyptian mummies that's more, let's say, broader and more engaged in the fact that Egyptian mummies are people and there are really um, a lot of conversations that we need to have to go away from the popular culture of Egyptian mummies. And what um, ethical considerations do you need to make when you're doing research in this field? Well, I've, until this year, I wasn't really uh, working closely with human remains, but this year, as a part of my fellowship at the Science Museum, I got to really interact with human remains. And I think that it's just tremendously important to remember that these are people, and they are people that are attached with cultural considerations that you really have to be more careful. And I'm really, for me, it's really an honor to work with human remains, and it's really an engagement that's completely uh, out of the ordinary. And it's just such a, a tremendous... Um, chance but also a big responsibility to work with human remains and so I'm really uh, working hard on making sure that we have conversations about the complex history of how Egyptian mummies came here and that we create displays that are more respectful but also that we're respectful of people's interest and also their responses so not everyone likes seeing human remains in museums and I think we really need to work harder on making sure that we create space where people can engage respectfully but also that they can choose not to see human remains. And finally, uh, do you have a favourite mummy or a favourite mummy anecdote? Yeah, I really, well, of course, because I grew up in Paris and I used to go to the Louvre a lot, I really um, research a lot and I'm really interested in the history of Egyptian mummies at the Louvre. I think my favourite story is about mummies that do not exist anymore because okay. I think that we don't really think about how complex it is to bring mummies back from Egypt. Obviously it's really problematic from you know, a cultural and, and, and sort of political standpoint but also in terms of preservation. Mm -hmm. And so just before the Egyptian department at the Louvre opened in 1827, uh, Champollion was the curator, he also is the person that did the decipherment of the hieroglyph and he had two mummies that decayed just before the opening because preservation of mummies is really difficult and so they had to ask the um, sort of government at the time to bury the mummies in the garden of the Louvre. I was really uh, uh, excited during my PhD that I found the original document that shows that the mummies were buried in the garden of the Louvre. Wow. And of course it's a really sad story but it's just like a really human story that shows that you know everything in museum is behind case but actually there is so oh, much work and consideration yeah. that goes behind it. But other than that the mummy that is actually on display at the Louvre is absolutely beautiful and I think <laughs> it's my favourite. That is absolutely fascinating and you're right there are so many stories behind those objects or those people that are in those cases it's really important to, to respect that so thank you so much for talking to us it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. We've had an absolutely amazing time at this fascinating exhibition. It's well worth a visit. This is in fact the last time that many of these objects will leave Egypt. Their next stop will be the Grand Egyptian Museum which will be opening soon. Absolutely, loads to see here. It's eye-opening, it's fascinating, it's accessible for adults and kids alike. And I turned up here not being able to spell Tutankhamun, and now I know all about his journey into the afterlife. For more great history content, check out at Viral History on Instagram and Viral underscore History on Twitter. See you next time.